Hello, YouTube. Um, hi. I've been really bad um, at uploading, excuse me, vlogs, and I want to apologize in advance. Um, so today's date is April 21st, and the Boston Marathon was on April 16th. So, I've got news. I've got to tell you something. Um, you ready? I'm going to sit down. So, I think the last time I uploaded a video, I'm not even sure what I said. Um, I've been so bad at vlogging. I tried to be good. Here's the deal. I also have a fitness Instagram and I tend to put everything on my story because all my friends are following that too. Here we go. So I'm really sorry that I haven't been active on here, but I wanted to update you guys. So basically end of training, the last three weeks, what happened? I did an 18 miler successfully finished that. That was really hard. I did a half marathon the Sunday before and then I didn't run at all. And then marathon day came, um, the Boston marathon. I went to it. I did. You might've thought that I didn't because I was so bad at training, but, um, the Boston marathon happened. If anyone was able to tune in that day, it was the worst weather in Boston marathon history. And I finished. Yay. So yeah, I'm like, uh, I feel really, really good about finishing that marathon. Um, I'll do a, like, I can do a full race report kind of video where I kind of walk you through the whole experience of going to the Boston Marathon. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put in my Instagram story because I captured it all on Instagram. So if you guys want to be following along, I recommend you follow me on there because vlogging is just very hard for me to do. And it, I don't know what it is about holding the camera horizontally. It's just annoying. Like I like holding my phone vertically and filming that way. Anyway, um, so long story short, um, the, it was like the worst, uh, the worst marathon I could ever imagine being a California person, California girl. I grew up here and I hate the cold. Um, I went to the university of Arizona and I loved the heat. Like I like thrived in 105 degree temperatures. So the, um, the wedding, the, the weather on the marathon day was 45 degrees raining sleet where the start line was there was like snow on the ground and um it was true hell <laughs> and i was in the outhouse before the run started and i thought oh i don't have to do this like i can just wait in here and just wait until i don't hear anything and then i don't have to run but i did because you know you just have to, you're kind of stuck at that point. Like you already took a bus out to the start line. There's no turning back now. Um, and finishing the Boston Marathon. Okay, so hang on. I'm gonna show you guys the whole experience now. Okay, hello. We're on the plane. En route. Looking, looking real good. Brianna has impressions. So I am not worried. We made it. <laughs> it's so cold. I wonder if you run a marathon in the snow. We're gonna find out. Wow. Okay, where do we go? Good morning. <laughs> it is the morning of. And it's a beautiful, beautiful day outside. I feel like going for a run. Gear check, done. Plastic trash bag, on. Lots of people, lots of rain, lots of wind. These are all the buses carting runners to the starting point. And look at that. Pick the corral number that you belong in and get in the line up there. 
You will then go orderly down from up there. Yellow, your turn is coming. It's just not yet. Okay. It's cold. My feet are wet. Everything's wet. We haven't even started yet. so heavy and my feet are like 20 pounds. The only thing getting me going is knowing that Molly and Johanna Update, we made it. We are now home and showered and warm. And now, and we now. get to eat. <laughs> We're gonna drink. Oh, what? Water. Okay. So, yeah, that was it. Um, awful, right? Like, you saw those conditions. Oh my gosh. And uh, mile 18 to mile 20, like m mile 18 to when I finally saw my friends was probably some of the hardest miles I have ever done. I just was like so over it. I was so cold. My um, legs were hurting. My hips were hurting. Like every, it was just bad. Um, and I woke up the next day kind of like, huh, that was kind of cool. <laughs> Like, there's something about it that that was, like, actually um, very empowering. That I could, of all people, this girl who will not even go somewhere if it's too cold. I won't even go snowboarding because my toes get cold. I could get through that marathon and I could finish. And I really believe that anyone can do a marathon now. Anyone. And I also think there's something to, um, I know, I think I've been saying, I don't know if I've ever said it on here, but I was planning on this just being my last marathon ever and never running one again because I'm just like, the training just seemed to be really difficult for me to keep up. But um, I like kind of caught the running bug the day after the Boston Marathon. It was really weird. Like I kind of was feeling it three weeks out when I did that 18 mile run and I like really did it and I got it out of the way, I thought, oh, like I just did an 18 mile run on my own. So that's kind of cool. And that's something that I would never have been able to do. Um, and I think, so here's the deal. I have caught the running bug. I'm running another marathon in December. I'm gonna do the CIM, uh, which is in Sacramento. That's where I'm from. I'm pumped. And I am going to, so I trained myself. I made my own training plan for my first marathon that qualified me. And I made my own training plan for this marathon that um, I got in about four hours. 
um, which is pretty good considering the conditions and I didn't have any kind of goal. I just wanted to finish. Um, and I've noticed in the endurance world and in the sports endurance world, um, and in running specifically, I remember when I was in high school, my friend basically said, who she ran cross country, she said, running is 80% mental, 20% physical. And her coach told her that. And when I heard that, I kind of thought, oh, okay, that makes sense. Because like when I'm running, I don't really feel pain. Like when you're kind of in that bubble, um, you don't really feel pain. And then all of a sudden you feel it and you really have to like mentally be prepared to keep going because um, your body is doesn't want to when it gets to a certain point. It's like, can we please stop, right? So um, I am going to develop a training plan that is very focused on the mental aspects of running. And um, I'm going to use it for this marathon. I might gift it to some friends and have them use it. But I've like kind of discovered a new obsession. Like I can't stop learning about running training and mindful meditation and applying it to running. There's just something to it. So here's the deal. I want to know if you guys think this sounds cool, if you think there's any merit to it. I've just noticed that all the running plans that I look at are like 97% physical and 3% mental. It's like, oh yeah, okay, so you have a 12 mile run, then you have a 14 mile run, and then you know, make sure that you are committed to doing this and be ready to experience some pain. Like that is not helpful, and you know? And if someone's never actually practiced experiencing pain and some kind of like mental activity to overcome that pain, then they're gonna be completely unprepared and they're not gonna know how to think or feel when that pain comes. So, I just sounded, I am like pumped about this, you guys. And I, I really wanna know if you think it would be cool to make some sort of like mindful marathon training plan. So there's obviously a training plan that you can adapt for you and your skill level and your running, um, your goals or whatever, but the focal point is mental activities and mindful um, activities that you can do to put your brain in the position where you on that mile 18, 19, 20, when your body is shutting down and you really wanna stop, you are mentally strong to push through it. Because I do, I, it's, just, it's just so clear to me now. Like running is mental, running is a mental sport. For people who are, you know, physically injured and who are actually hurting themselves at a certain point. Yeah, that, that's a little different. Like if you have a tear, then that's a different case. But if you're like a physically capable, um, fully physically trained for this marathon person, the only reason that you would not finish that race is if something happens up here. So I am thinking about that and I'm gonna be doing a ton of research in the next couple months. Um, I'm not done running, I'm not done um, vlogging. I definitely wanna keep you guys updated on how I'm doing and what I'm doing. And I kind of have this new secret goal, not secret, I mean, kind of like developing it, but I wanna be a running coach, so cool. So that's all, I finished the Boston Marathon and it was the hardest day of my life and the most um, exciting and motivating and I feel like a superwoman now, so it was definitely worth it. And thanks for following along on this vlog. If you've been watching all these videos, I really appreciate it. And that's all. I'm clearly like amped. I'm going to go listen to podcasts, read some books, do some research. I'll see you guys later. Bye.